Uh, I'm going to speak to you this morning about what I call an interdisciplinary language for interdisciplinary communication, tying together some interesting concepts from Aristotle, actually, ethos, pathos, and logos. Just by way of introduction, <laughs> uh, my name is Marta White. I teach at Georgia State University. Been there since 1996. I teach mostly the capstone course, strategic management. That's my area. I also teach international business. I run the uh, honors program for the college, and I do some study abroad. I'm interested in this. Um, because this is really a fun conference that I try to come to every year. And what I was talking about earlier is referring to the notion of connecting the dots. And I borrow that from Steve Jobs' commencement speech to Stanford a few years ago. Because coming here, I, I'm always interested in hearing what others are doing, because that always helps me figure, I, figure out you know, how what I'm doing relates to, to everything else and how it fits. But I think what's important is to recognize that um, it's really just a process. Um, this is by no means the end goal, but it's pieces or steps in the process. And if uh, Professor Horn comes back, he'll, he'll be happy to hear that. <coughs> and he'll probably ask me some questions about um, business and how it's an oxymoron to uh, helping people in the world or something like that. Okay, so maybe he'll be back. I was inspired to write this paper from the intersection of what I'm going to call character, emotions, and logic, similar to what a Hungarian rhapsody is like, which is very beautiful but very sad at the same time. And in this paper, I'm exploring ethos, pathos, and logos within the context of academic globalization. I'm going to go a little bit fast because I know that some of you have questions that you want to talk about, and I'm excited to, to get to those. We are students of the world, and I always tell my students that I'm learning um, at the same time that they are. So we, as professors, are always students of the world, I think. And as such, we need an interdisciplinary language because this is going to be pivotal, pivotal for interdisciplinary communication which is what I think the world needs. Current state of the world is all about miscommunication. Uh, it's really imperative to launch this language tool that underscores global commonalities and tries to mitigate the differences. So such a platform would foster interdisciplinary research, education, and communication. New paradigms would evolve that would be grounded in ethos, pathos, and logos. I mean, we are developing new paradigms every day. The hand that you developed where the finger was all in one piece and then you decided that you could break it and it was more mobile and, and a better model. I mean, that was the next paradigm. So what we're doing is we're really following this yin and yang where these states are interrelated, interacting, and interchanging learning spheres for all of us. So I mentioned the Parthenon. <clears throat> As an analogy, think about day and night, okay? Day and night blend at some point. And if you think about the Parthenon, really Greek thought was epitomized. It was birthplace of democracy, <coughs> and everyday citizens were depicted in the friezes for the very first time, because everyday citizens were important. So ethos, pathos, and logos represent the cross-disciplinary communication devices that can be synergistically transform and ignite ac academic globalization. And the synergistic is important because we spoke about team-based learning and that to me was really all about the synergy. <coughs> you can have a problem where individuals try to solve those problems as you mentioned in your video, but when it, individuals get together and form groups and teams and try to analyze what the best solution is, the result is synergistic, it's superior. So I'm going to talk about ethos, pathos, and logos along with 
what I call Lewis's seminal work, his LMR framework, which has given birth to really important cross-cultural tools, culture active in ice. So relevant to this paper is the fact that if you look at the Parthenon, the columns are slanted inwards, which you really can't see from the naked eye, but if you extend those columns into the sky, they intersect at about a mile above the Earth. And it's precisely this extension beyond traditional thinking that represents the ethos, the pathos, and the logos that I'm talking about here. Okay, and these represent the character, the emotion, and the logic, respectively. So the LMR framework deals with linear active, multi-active, and reactive. And these are the vehicles for interdisciplinary language. And to me, this enables interdisciplinary communication. So what I'm suggesting is we extend beyond this LMR framework. We think beyond these conventional boundaries in fostering what I think is paramount, and that is this communication across interdisciplinary means. With ethos, pathos, and logos, we have a communication platform. And this gives us the context, the foundation for academic globalization. If you think about it, ethos, pathos, and logos started 2,000 years ago with Greek philosopher Aristotle. Okay, he talked about pers persuasion, and that persuasion can be divided into these three categories. And the ethos stands for character, and here the persuasion comes from the credibility, the authority, or the reputation of the speaker. Pathos deals with suffering, the emotional appeal. Persuasion is going to be grounded in sympathy, emotion, instinct, <coughs> and logos, which means word in Greek. Okay, and this is the logical appeal. So here, persuasion is all about reason and the logical portion of the appeal, such as we have an argument. Here's A, and it's A, then B. Okay. All right, the LMR framework is about what is communicated, not how it's communicated. Ice provenance, okay. Let me run through this quickly. Uh, back in the 1980s, we had all kinds of cultural, cross-cultural, cross-cultural uh, researchers grappling with trying to look at national cultures, summarize, simplify them. Some of these prior theoretical frameworks you've probably heard about, uh, Klukan and Stradbeck, Trompeniers, Hamden Turner, most notably Hofstede, most famous, right? Well, along comes Richard Lewis. He's a cross-cultural consultant. He authored texts like When Cultures Collide and The Cultural Imperative. A lot of MBA courses use these in their international business classes. And he was challenged to explain international business cultures. So he wanted to be simple and comprehensive in his classification. And he conceived of this LMR framework, which stands for linear active, multi-active, and reactive. In fact, reactive was the first time that he had come up with anything that captured those qualities. Later, Culture Active and ICE were developed, which are cross-cultural tools, assessment tools. Okay, so the strength of the L LMR model is it focuses on the individual as the unit of analysis, not the nation state. Um, we're focusing on communication, and to me that's the major impediment in today's world amongst cultures, countries, and really a key consideration of globalization. And here are the basic categories of linear active, multi-active, reactive. And if you were to take culture active, which is this cross-cultural assessment tool, there are 60 questions that you would answer. And based on your answers, you would be classified as more linear active, more multi-active, or more reactive, depending on what your communication tendencies were. This is such a powerful tool, I have to tell you. I've done it in classes, uh, people have done it in organizations, Duke uses it to classify their teams because it's just infinite. Um, it's just 
amazing to be able to classify people however you want to. If you want more diversity, if you want to try to look at, okay, what happens if we put all the linear actives together and all the multi-actives together? How are they going to solve these problems? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, because I'm standing in front? Is that why? I'm standing in front of them, is that why? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, it gives you some time to read the characteristics. <laughs> oh. You're okay. I didn't push it hard enough. Yeah. Happened to all. <laughs> That's right. Keep going. I can I can transition oh, okay. for you. Okay. So these are the three basic categories. <coughs> so that they can see. Of the linear active, multi active, reactive, and. I think that we all know people who fall into these categories, and it's interesting to take this assessment exam yourself because you learn things about yourself, truly, okay? So, um, what I call exploring, expanding, and energizing. Um, international education, interdisciplinary communication and globalization. This framework really gives us a tool <coughs> for both academic academicians and practitioners. I see this as a vehicle for interdisciplinary language. <coughs> so, the contribution that I think this paper makes contribution of this paper is it links together this LMR framework, which I've used and has been tremendously powerful, with Aristotle from over 2,000 years ago, who looked at persuasion, which you can think of as communication, through ethos, pathos, and logos. Now, Aristotle's favorite was logos, but really all of them, I think, are important. <coughs> and in this trilogy, um, Similar to thinking about the Parthenon and the columns, Aristotle argued for writing effectiveness, and what I'm arguing for is interdisciplinary communication effectiveness. And this is something that's enhanced by the LMR framework. So integrating ethos, pathos, logos, thinking beyond the earth, thinking outside of traditional thinking, and connecting this with LMR if you were to take culture active, you would end up as a dot <laughs> on this triangle. Okay? So you would see where you're more linear active, multi-active, or reactive. And somebody was asking me that. How do you tell if you're interdisciplinary? Well, interdisciplinary would be in the middle, because you see all aspects. You're able to communicate with multi-active, with reactive, and linear active. Was that you who asked me that? Yes. Uh -huh. Is to be a what? Martian. Oh, a Martian. A Martian? <laughs> uh, no, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, not a Martian. 
your yeah. mediator, yeah. your moderator. How to avoid bicultural behavior or to the middle. <laughs> First you have to know what you are. Okay, so you take the uh, culture active, you figure out where you are. But the important thing is, if you want to communicate with others from different points in the triangle, you have to be able to see their horizons. You have to understand what's important to them. And then you have to find the commonalities. Okay, and that's what, this is just another example of the triangle, triangle. So if you take this LMR framework and you put it together with the ethos, pathos, and logos, like this, where I'm saying that multi-active, the emotional is like the pathos, the uh, linear active is the logos, which is the reason, and ethos, ethics is the reactive. Put that together and you get this view where you know what you are, but you have to be able to understand the other person's horizon. That's the key to interdisciplinary communication. I, I think uh, we live in a society of masks. Masks? As we uh, So if I want to uh, talk to the other person, I don't know what's the mask of the other person. Maybe a black <coughs> person puts uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the name of Dionysius, the Dionysius mask or the Apollo's mask. Uh -huh. So if the Apollo, uh -huh. with the Apollo's mask, uh -huh. it's going to be more logical. Uh -huh. With the Dionysius mask, uh -huh. it's going to be more reactive. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. so in, in the approach, uh, we are just playing roles. If they're wearing a mask, how do you get behind the mask? I don't know. Well, I, I see that with cultural differences. Um, and I see that with people who find out that I'm Cuban, um, especially Hispanic people. As soon as they find out I'm Cuban, they relax. Oh, you know I'm Cuban? They start talking in Spanish. Mm -hmm. but you would never know that because I don't look mm -hmm. Cuban. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, I don't have an accent and I don't do that. So right. you see that a lot, especially in American culture, um, because, because it's it's, a, it's about a comfortability, um, especially in the African-American community. I have many friends who are academics in the African-American community, but when they're in their family setting, their, their speech patterns are different, yep. the way they interact with people are very different. Um, not, not everybody, but I've seen that sure. significantly. In Atlanta, I have plenty of friends who work in big time consulting, Anderson Consulting, yep. and if you met them, you would think, wow, he is a business person, and then when you get him at the bar, yeah. he, he's, not, he, he's right. relaxed. So I, I understand what you're saying by mask. It's, this is my professional mask, and this is who we are, and right. you know what I mean? Right. Right. Where right. if you get me out and we're playing basketball, uh -huh. you know, it goes down to that core, are you competitive? Yeah. Can I yeah. something? Yeah, please, please. Uh, sure, that is true. Everybody, you have to buy yourself. And everybody uh, tries to do the best of the things you will uh, succeed. But uh, I asked uh, the same question when I'm asking you, uh, Professor Warren. And he didn't give me an answer. He was not interested. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> he was here, but he left. Yeah. <laughs> so he was not interested. That's what it is. But I think for the cooperation <laughs> thing, and the ethos, pathos, and so on, yeah. for all these uh, things, cooperation does work if the resources are more or less equally distributed. If you have a skewed distribution of uh, resources, then we are competitive. And this is the, the much more the big problem in the scientific world to cooperate with people. If someone has a lot of source money, a lot of uh, third money coming, and I do not have third money, he, I can put masks on so, so many I have. He's not interested in me. Right. So anytime you have an imbalance. And what is the ethos and what is the pathos here? This is, we are not talking about that. These are the resources. Yes. It's like new yes. production. Yes, well, yeah. <laughs> You're back to resources. <laughs> what was the question that you asked, Professor? Mm -hmm. Do you want to ask me? Yeah. Um, um, this is a very heterogeneous definition of ethos. <coughs> It is dependent on the society, on the specific society, so it's really a lot of parallel ethos. Yeah, it is. But this is dictating from because if I'm a member of the mafia, and I'm a killer, then in that society, I have a ethos. Yeah, I understand. 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 Yeah, I understand.
you guys want to share something on this? <laughs> yes? I, I think uh, in some countries, according to my experience, uh, people are, you know, trapped or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are trapped. I said in fact, yes. 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 People from Italy, people from Spain, people from Mexico, people from Argentina, you know. Yeah. And I think uh, in those environments, the three types yes. exist and they, you know, they are mixed, right? Yes. And in some other countries, they are not. So many people from many countries, mm -hmm. and it's more from the two mm -hmm. places, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think from this first kind of country, people learn how to get, how to adapt mm -hmm. more easily. Mm -hmm. People who live in this country mm -hmm. adapt to each other. Because those cultures are yeah. similar. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, in Switzerland, people say uh, Italia, Italian, mm -hmm. uh, German, and mm -hmm. French. Mm -hmm. So they can interact. We, 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 should, we should give you the opportunity to finish the talk okay. and we can do that. No, no, it's fine. But I have asked my question, so that's why I'm interfering. <laughs> We're talking conceptually, ideally. This is what. Yeah, no, I'm just curious. I mean, it's no, fascinating right. to see you're how right. people communicate. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> and they might not. They might be peers, mm -hmm. but they might think that they're more superior than totally. another person. Totally. Totally. Absolutely. If you have um, what full professor versus assistant professor, right? Right. And they probably do have more power. <coughs> do they think they do? Again, that goes back to the statement about that's that's what the world is dealing with is all these miscommunications. <coughs> so yeah, very good point. Um, just another example with multi-active-reactive. 
again, you're going to try to emphasize and maximize the areas that are in common and minimize the differences. You can do this for countries, Japan versus the US, same thing. Maximize the areas in common. And perhaps this is easier because the person's from the other country and they don't get past, right? And so this was the US and Germany. like flipping through the slides on the block. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is the uh, Japan journal. So the point is that different things are important to different people, different individuals, and different cultures. France and the US. So really studying these, and especially if you're dealing with someone, if it's a negotiation, conclude all of these are very, very important. The point that I, I was going to make earlier about some cultures, before I get to this conclusion part, some cultures um, blend their professional and personal roles, and some don't. So that's another distinguishing factor that I think matters in this communication. Mm -hmm. So LNR constructs, I'm coupling them with the ethical, emotional, and logical of Aristotle's persuasion to come up with this interdisciplinary communication. Okay. Pivotal role that key elements of the ethos, pathos, and logos play in viewing the world through the linear active, multi-active, and reactive allows us to communicate by maximizing the commonality and minimizing the differences. And I think resulting model that best captures where academic organizations have been and should be headed. So this paper was built on the idea of the Parthenon with the columns extending beyond the structure itself, highlighting the ethos, pathos, and logos, and combining these with the commonalities of the LMR framework. So if you have a multicultural team, that's going to be superior to the team that's only linear active, or only multi-active, or only reactive. So combining them in this way maximizes your strengths and minimizes your weaknesses. And that's why we try to have mm -hmm. diversity in all of our teams. Because multicultural team represents communication beyond borders, beyond columns, and on and on. With synergistic strengths greater than any sole Okay, so we looked at the intersection of two trilogies, linear active, multi-active, reactive, with ethos, pathos, logos, and I'm, I'm proposing communicating outside the box, beyond the triangle, where the Parthenon pillars interconnect, and language extends beyond cultures. I mean, that's the key. Language goes beyond culture to maximize harmonization, 